Hello, my YouTube friends. Hello, my YouTube friends. Glad that you could join me again. If you, if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. So I got a very exciting video for you today, and it involves insulating a mobile home with a Styro Aircrete. So uh, this year we actually moved, and I'm actually right now sitting in our own uh, mobile home. Uh, we started this spring, and it took quite a bit for it to get here and to get set up, but uh, we're actually set up, and uh, we're mostly ready for winter. And uh, yeah, so uh, but we uh, the the it needed some repair because there was some rot around the windows and the doors from uh, years of leaking. Um, so the inside was actually pretty good. One of the walls needed uh, a new sheet of plywood. Uh, but on the outside, uh, what I did is I tore all the uh, aluminum siding off. It was in pretty rough shape. And then uh, some of the studs, I, uh, I added an inch and a half um, so that I would get a four inch cavity. And some of the studs that were so badly rotted, I actually used uh, uh, spruce boards. I cut them down to four inches and, and fitted them right into where the old stud was, or right up against it in most cases, left the old one in place. And, uh, and then uh, just to put plastic on the outside with some scrap plywood and uh, poured those cavities. And it was very successful and very happy with the results. Some of the rot uh, I just simply couldn't get at. I couldn't replace without doing major tear apart. Uh, but uh, the nice thing with the Steyr Aircrete is that it uh, it just encased all of that rot and uh, uh, For sure the rot is not going to get any worse and it'll never get wet again. So uh, Really, it's uh, it's a problem solved and then the uh, the Steyr Aircrete it also adds a lot of uh, structural strength so overall the uh, we're in way better shape now. I was only able to do the first wall uh, with the patio door and the main door and then a couple of windows uh, that took a lot of time, uh, but I do plan to do the rest of the trailer. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to get that done this year because uh, today we already had some snow, and uh, so otherwise it will probably be in the spring. But uh, anyway, I've almost got a 1,000 subscribers, so it would be really nice if you guys could subscribe, and uh, there will definitely be updates to this uh, video, and uh, there's some other projects that I'm working on. Oh, yes, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that... Uh, I found a very simple way to mix the styro aircrete. Uh, all you really need is a plastic barrel with a lid. And uh, I'll show you also in the video as we get through it how I mix the styro aircrete. All right, well, let's get started and I'll catch up with you at the end. So I'm taking on the biggest challenge yet. I uh, intend to take all the tin off and uh, remove the insulation in, the, in between the studs and then uh, plastic in a, in a form and fill it with styro aircrete. I'm going to try to do that through the whole entire trailer on both sides and uh, just progressively work at uh, one section at a time. So I'm just getting started up there and uh, we'll see how it goes. So the left side is in very rough shape but there's two by threes in there and I'm going to switch that to two by fours at the top as well. It's not too bad. And uh, over on this side, well, there's quite a bit of repair that I already did. I got a half, a, a couple of half studs in there, but I will replace them with two by four. And then the other stud, I will add an inch and a half. And so I'll end up with a full uh, two by four width to fill with styro aircrete. So I installed the two by four and the two by three that was on the inside. I actually brought to the outside. So now there's a double stud there. Same thing on the other side, and uh, yeah, the 2x3 that was on the inside is also at the top. So I should be ready to get the door in now. I put uh, a new plate on the bottom there, and then an extra plate again to tie them together, and uh, that should definitely hold for a while now. Yeah, so I've got the uh, 1x2s installed here. Goes all the way up, not quite to the top, because I don't want any wood at the very top. Got one on the left side there as well. And uh, I'll be putting plastic on. I got a little bit of mesh on the bottom plates there because uh, I want to make sure the styro aircrete sticks to that. So yeah, I'll put some plastic up and then uh, two or three feet of form and I'm ready to start filling. All right, I did the first section. So I had another, I don't know, about 30 inch piece there. And uh, the plastic just went up on the inside again. And 
I got my little uh, angled piece there so I can pour the stuff in. So uh, I used about half a barrel so far. We'll see how far we get. All right, a little bit messy, but not too bad. I've got uh, two sections up there, I guess, I don't know, maybe five feet. Five by uh, three, a little bit more than three maybe. Uh, anyway, so I'm right up to the top where the hinges are. And uh, I just used that little recycling bucket with a dustpan and it actually worked pretty good. Yeah, I got a few spills, but it wasn't that bad actually. And uh, I just got to set up my platform now for the rest. So I ended up with a bit of a blowout last night. Um, what I've realized is that uh, we should only do about four feet at a time. And uh, what happened is, as you can see, I lost a, on a bucket and a half or something down there. Um, but the deal is that when you fill up the whole wall like this, like I did, there's just too much weight at the bottom point. And uh, I guess I could have secured it better. But really, the most effective way, I think, is to do like four feet at a time. Let it harden for a day and then uh, continue. All right, I've moved on to the next section. I've got the window out. Now that styrofoam I put in, if you saw some of the stills in the other video. Um, so I think I'm going to leave that styrofoam just add an inch and a half and uh, put the styro aircrete up against it. But it's in pretty rough shape. You can see the top plate of the window, it's totally rotten. I don't know what I'm going to find out when I pull the rest off, but. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing I'm doing this. So the plate underneath the door, oh, it's in bad shape. But fortunately, I have another 2x6, so I'm going to replace that. And since uh, I've already added an inch and a half, actually I've ripped some of my uh, spruce boards into 4 inches and just tacked them to the studs. Uh, so the old studs that were in pretty rough shape, so that should all work really good. So it's probably time for a little bit of update. I got quite a ways, I got around the door and the window, and uh, the side door has all been completely rebuilt. Uh, I got my screen door back on, and I basically just have that section left over here. So uh, I'm stripping it off, and uh, I'm going to try something a bit different, and uh, when I get into it, I will, uh, I will take a video. Alright, so I've uh, basically rebuilt everything, as you can see, so get a little closer here. I've just taken a spruce board, cut it to four inches, and just put it beside that rotten stud. All the way to the top there, added a piece to kind of bring it around there. The window, I had to pretty much rebuild everything in there. It was pretty rotten. And down here. So anyway, uh, what I want to try this time is, uh, see if I can back up a little bit here. There we go. Yeah, so what I want to try to do is... Uh, put the landscape fabric on before I pour and see if it'll actually just uh, uh, kind of adhere right to the uh, styro aircrete. All right, I'm gonna set that up. So there we go, I think that's about, well, it's a bit more than three feet. Uh, I'm gonna have to pull it down underneath the window so I can pour the styro uh, aircrete in there. But uh, I'll just put the plywood, uh, scrap piece of plywood on there now. And then uh, we'll see how that goes. So I had the good fortune of uh, getting this platform for my friend. It's a really heavy duty platform. It was actually designed to clean eave troughs. And uh, I've got the plywood moved up. I've got my little uh, hinge thing there. I'll just kind of get in a little closer so you can see it. So it's just sitting at an angle and it just helps to dump the stuff in. So uh, I've got my bucket up there and uh, I'll start pouring it in. All right, so here's a video on how to make a barrel of styre aircrete. So first of all, what I've got in the bottom of the barrel here, here like a better view, uh, that's left over from my batch about two, three days ago. I don't clean my barrel. The reason is, first of all, what am I going to do with it? Uh, and second of all, um, why waste it? Because this little bit that's uh, gathered at the bottom here, uh, once I roll the barrel, it's all going to get mixed in. We're never going to see it back. Uh, there is some uh, some uh, hardened styro aircrete there. There's probably a bit of powder. There might be a bit of hard stuff, but it doesn't really matter because it'll all get mixed in. So I've got my uh, foaming device set up here and uh, my pump and uh, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to add um, I, okay so um, what I'm gonna, all right so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to start putting foam into the barrel and then at the same time 
I got about 30 gallons of uh, shredded styrofoam and I'm going to add that in at the same time and uh, then I'll save a little bit of room at the top here so that I can add my slurry in the end. All right. So I mixed up uh, a half a bag of Portland cement into two pails, about uh, five gallons. And I'll give that a little stir and then I will add that to the barrel. So after I get it outside, the first thing I like to do is just turn it upside down for a minute. I'll probably give it a little uh, tap with the hammer, with the rubber hammer, and then uh, start rolling it. All right, so here we go. It actually rolls really quite easily, just moving with my foot. And um, those baffles inside, they tend to kind of corkscrew things. But that's basically all I have to do. So I'm going to do that a few times and then we'll open up the lid. So I rolled it about 60 feet back and forth three times and uh, at the end of every 60 feet I would either stand it on right up or then again upside down. So every time I just flipped it once and it would actually roll in the, in the opposite. The lid would be on the left or the lid would be on the right. So uh, we'll take a look at it here. Pull the lid off and look inside. Okay, there we go. See that's just really nicely mixed, thoroughly mixed and that's ready to be poured and that took very very little effort fantastic so I've got this tub and um, I obviously I can't handle the big 50 gallons but I can so I'm just going to tip it and it should kind of just fill that right up I can also see that it's uh, very consistent all the way through. See, and that's pourable. So that's gonna go into every nook and cranny. Okay, there's a little bit of stuff there that uh, was on the sides, but that's, that'll just mix right in. So I'll just fill this with my shovel and we're good to go. So the only thing I'm using is just a dustpan. And I'll just scoop it up and pour it in. It's quite simple. These five or four cavities filled up to where the hinges are, so I'm going to screw that little piece up and then just uh, pour the last foot or so. Well, I'm taking a stand back and having a look. So that section there, I put the uh, landscape fabric on before I poured the styro Uh In most places it's stuck. I'm not sure if I'm totally happy with that. Um, because I think I wanted to attach a little bit better, so I have some other ideas for that. Uh, but anyway, this is uh, the whole front of the trailer now has been increased to four inches uh, cavity, and then all poured right full of the styro aircrete. Um, but winter has come, as you can see, the snow. So I'm going to uh, put house wrap on here for the winter, and we'll take a look at it again in the spring. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Uh, I know I had fun putting it together. And uh, really the purpose of this channel is that uh, anybody that wants to uh, try some of this stuff, I really encourage you to do it. It takes a little bit of trial and error, but uh, as you go through, you will, uh, you'll definitely learn what works and what doesn't work. There's a couple of things that I may not have mentioned is uh, I found that because it's only quarter inch plywood on the inside of the uh, trailer, uh, I actually had to take uh, some three-quarter inch wood and strips and screw them into the new studs that I put in place uh, just to keep it from uh, bowing out. And I also found it was best to pour about three feet at a time and let it harden overnight. And then the next day you can pour another three feet. Uh, if you try to pull the whole, pour the whole, it can be done, but it has to be very secure uh, and, and uh, otherwise 
You see, the weight of that whole entire cavity will sit at the bottom, and it will try its best to uh, find a little hole to escape out of. Um, but if you do three feet, there's a lot less pressure. And once that sets up, the, uh, the above pressure no longer affects it. So it's really kind of a strategic way to do it. And, um, but other than that, it, uh, it went really well. And uh, so, yeah, um, again, the purpose is that if you want to try some of this stuff, like uh, if you have comments or questions, I'd be happy to help you along the way. Now, some of you are probably wondering, well, how do I make styro air creep? Well, I'm going to make another video on that pretty soon. Um, but basically, what you uh, will have to do is you have to have a foam generator, uh, something that will actually produce um, the, the, the foam that's required for the air creep. Now, I did a video on phenomenal foam. If you want to check that out, it's, uh, that's the foam that I use. It never fails. Uh, it ne doesn't even have to be perfect weight or anything. Um, and uh, and it's, it's very effective. Uh, it, sometimes I've actually seen the, the foam that was left inside my little spout from my gun uh, three days later, uh, there was still foam inside of it. That's how long it lasts. Uh, so that was really quite amazing. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's the first thing. You're going to need to have uh, some way to generate foam. And uh, you're going to have to find a way to shred styrofoam or buy shredded styrofoam. Now, you, if you have a small project, you might be able to buy some of it uh, in some of the craft stores and that sort of thing. I think Walmart might have some big bags. Uh, but if you want to do some serious volume with it, then, uh, yeah, you're going to have to find a way to shred the styrofoam. The best method uh, that's out there right now is to have an electric lawnmower and turn it upside down and build kind of a barrel on top of it and uh, put a screen at your outlet. You need a good solid screen. It's got to be well secured. Uh, and, then, uh, and then shred the styrofoam, blow it into a... You can make a big pillowcase uh, if, if uh, someone can sew. Um, you can sew up, uh, take a big sheet and sew it into a big pillowcase. That's all that my wife did for me. And I've just got a three inch pipe into it. And um, so when it's full, I just empty it. It's very, very easy to handle. The nice thing about it is I don't even uh, touch any of the styrofoam. Uh, just when I drop it into the shredder and after that, it's uh, in the bag and it gets poured. And physically, I never touch it again. Um, so anyway, um, so that's just some of the things you need. And uh, as you see, you'll need that. Um, you'll need to get a barrel. Now, uh, I've been doing everything on a shoestring budget. I haven't got a lot of money to put into this, and I've got to kind of use the resources that are available to me. And uh, so I had a barrel here. I didn't have a lid for it. I just, uh, as you see, I just made a three-quarter inch, made a circle and, and took my time and sanded it down so it fit nice. And it's just held in with a couple of screws. I imagine I will probably get a couple of better latches on it. But uh, the thing has got to roll, so... The latch can be a bit of a concern because it can let go when you're rolling it. So, I mean, really, the screws work. Um, and uh, so that's all you really need to be able to mix the stuff. And uh, it doesn't take a whole lot. It really doesn't. And uh, you'll find that uh, you'll get very phenomenal results. Uh, be patient. Uh, be persistent. That's the main thing is you got to keep at it. If you got a problem, you got to find out what the problem is. And you got to find a solution to it to make it work again. So yeah, anyway, hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, then please give it a like, because it really helps to uh, get, the, get the video circulated, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, well, then please subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell, I guess that's important too, so you get the updates, but other than that, uh, as soon as I have uh, another video, I will upload it, and, uh, and until then, I wish you the best of luck, and we'll see you next time.